So before anything, is it worth it to make liang pi at home? The answer is absolutely yes. It's totally worth it. Because compared to the packaged cool skin noodles, this homemade liang pi is almost a completely different category of things. You just can't get the same chill and bite from the box stuff. Unfortunately, in China nowadays, if you get liang pi at a noodle shop outside of the north, lots of times they probably won't be making it the more time-consuming old-fashioned way. Similar to the Shili Zhichan Fan that's unfortunately becoming endemic in Guangdong nowadays, in an era where cheap, quick, and easy seems to be the goal anywhere and everywhere, I think liang pi making should be the practice that we all appreciate more of. So while it's not exactly a quick weeknight meal sort of thing, if you love liang pi, I think you do owe it to yourself to just at least try to make it at home. Now I do know that liang pi has a reputation of being difficult to make, and I know it may be weird to say, but they are not that hard really. I'll probably put them as、uh, harder to make than fresh noodles at home, but easier than baozi. There will be a few steps between flour to this chewy noodles, but if you follow the technique and process, they are actually pretty foolproof. So now let's first take a look at a high-level overview of what's gonna be going on here. First, make a dough this time with 60% hydration. Then auto lease, and then come back to knead till smooth and set aside to rest. After that, we'll wash the gluten till the water runs kind of clear. Next, mix some yeast in with the gluten and let it rise, and let the starch water set for three to four hours. Meanwhile, make the yolazi chili oil and other components. After that starch water set, we'll steam the gluten and the liang pi. Finally, cut it up, season, and ready to eat. So, right, let's get into the details here, and we'll begin with our dough. Here are 200 grams of AP flour. You don't have to sweat about your choice of flour. Just use whatever cheap white AP that's available to you, and don't waste the good stuff. Now, mix in two gram or half teaspoon salt and 120 gram water. Mix it together into a blob. Cover and let it auto lease for 20 minutes to let the gluten develop a bit. 20 minutes later, come back. Knead your dough by pressing down and folding it up. We are helping it to develop the gluten this way. Repeat the process and fold the motion till your dough becomes sort of uniform like this. Then cover and let it rest for another 20 minutes. After that time, come back. We can start our very fun gluten washing process. Just add in about half a cup of water at a time. Knead the dough in water, just like how you usually knead. This way, we can keep the gluten relatively intact instead of breaking up, which would end up being difficult to work with. So when the water gets thicker and milky like this. Reserve at the side. Remember to use a strainer to catch any loose dough bits, and then add in another half cup of water. Then keep washing. Repeat this process till the water runs kind of clear and not that milky, which means we got most of the starch out. For reference, we use four cups of water here. So now I have a rant. Recently, I've seen people on TikTok trying to make vegan chicken by washing gluten. It's all cool,、um, but they also just let the starch water washing away.、Um, I think that's a little bit wasteful because you see our precious starch water here. It will just turn into this awesome noodles in just a couple hours. So right here comes our first technique. The starch in the water here needs a certain time to set. If the time is too short, then the batter itself will be too thin and the liang pi will be too soft and soggy. But if you let it set for too long, then the batter will be too thick. The liang pi will just become too dry and easy to break. So for making liang pi, the sweet spot will be、uh, three to four hours. So just let your liang pi batter set aside. 
Just don't stir. Don't even think about it. Just go do something else. Now with the gluten, just add in an eighth teaspoon yeast. Mix it in with the same knead and full motion. Fold for about a minute or two. Cover, set aside, and let it ferment. Some people would use leavening agent here, but personally, I prefer to use yeast because it still creates nicer bubbles inside. So when the gluten and the storage water are resting aside, let's make our three major seasoning components, namely. Yo po la zi chili oil, sesame paste, and garlic water. This is a family style simple chili oil. So first, heat up your wok. Add in 80 grams of Thai zi yu virgin rapeseed oil, or other good quality oil like peanut or flaxseed. Heat your oil till light bubbles are forming around a pair of chopsticks. Then add in a quarter of an onion sliced and an inch of ginger, together with three cloves of garlic. Both smashed. Fry it for about three minutes on medium. Toss in two star anise and a half teaspoon fennel seeds. Fry till onions are golden brown, or another five minutes. Then strain out everything. Next, get the chili powder ready in a heat-proof bowl. So this is Qin Jiao Chili from Shanxi Province. Ah,、uh, it's a chili that's fried with Cai Ziyou and then grind into a powder. It's not a very spicy variety and mostly used for its fragrance and color. So you can just use cashmere or gochugaru directly. Now heat the oil up again to 180 degrees. Then pour it into the chili powder. Quick mix. Then finally mix in half teaspoon Chinese dark vinegar and set aside. The second condiment to prep is sesame paste. Now this is not requisite for Liangpi, but it's、uh, my personal must-haves. So here's one tablespoon of toasted sesame paste.、Uh, you can just use tahini and fry it till light brown to get the same level of toastiness. And because this is thick, we'll need to dilute it down. So just add in one teaspoon of water first. Mix till the water is absorbed. Then keep adding water bit by bit. Till you reach this consistency, and here we used five teaspoons in total. And next, we can make our garlic water. So take three big cloves of peeled garlic, toss in a mortar together with half teaspoon salt, pound it into a paste, add in four tablespoons of water, mix, and then take it out. And with that, our major seasonings are ready. Now we can start the most intense part: steaming the liang pi. First things first, let's talk about our steaming setup. So you will need a big wok to be able to steam your liang pi in. A flat white plate for liang pi, a spatula or anything to help loosen up the sheet, a brush for oiling. Optionally, a bench scraper to clean the plate after steaming, and of course, some cat tongs to help lift the plate out of that very hot water.、Uh, of course, you can sup with、uh, regular tongs if cat tongs are not available to you. And plus, on top of this, you will need a small bowl of oil and another container of cool water to cool down the plate. All right, so now let's take a look at our starch water. As you can see, the water and starch already separated a lot. So just carefully dip down the water on top. Try to keep the starch remain down there as much as possible till we get something like this. Then there will be our liang pi batter. Give it a very good stir to make sure nothing stuck at the bottom. Then the batter is ready. And now we can begin. First, generously brush some oil onto your steaming plate. Give the batter a good stir to make sure it's homogenous. Ladle enough batter to cover the bottom of your plate. For us, this is about 90 milliliters of batter for a 24 centimeter wide liang pi sheet. Give it a jiggle to make it even. Then carefully place the plate directly onto boiling water. Cover. Make sure the water is at a heavy boil so that the liang pi can form beautifully and quickly. And then just let it steam for one and a half minutes. 
So right, when time's up, uncover. It's done when you can see big bubbles forming like this. Now take it out, place it on cool water, brush some oil on the liangpi. Take out the plate, use a spatula or a chopstick to loosen up the edge. Then gently peel the liangpi off the plate. Now this is your liangpi sheet. Just put it aside to cool down, move on to the next one, repeat the process till you finish your batter. And if this is all too fast for you to catch, I recommend you to check out our uncut process video up here for more tips and details. So now with our liangpi ready and cool down, we can assemble. So for one serving, uh, just cut out half of the gluten into about half inch pieces. Take half the liangpi, fold it up in three and cut it into two centimeter wide strips. Loosen it up with your hands, then place it in a bowl. Top it with your gluten cubes and add in one and a half tablespoon garlic water, one tablespoon sesame paste, and some julienne cucumber. Then add in quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon MSG, half tablespoon each of Yopo La Zi chili oil and dark Chinese vinegar. Then finally top it off with some cilantro, and now your liangpi is ready to be devoured. So the portion in the video makes two servings. Uh, if you want to make a bigger batch, you can use 100 grams of flour per serving as a reference base and scale things up. It's a little bit laborious, but once you streamline the steps according to your own kitchen setup, it's not that hard and kind of fun. So liangpi lovers out there, don't hesitate, give it a try, you will be rewarded. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.